Future Literacy. It's a concept developed by UNESCO. And uh, it's really about this, using the future to innovate the present. Using the future to innovate the present. I believe that's what we need in educational practices right now. So how does that really work? I'm going to let students make a prediction based on whatever they know now and describe a dream of where they want the world to go. So imagine this, it's 2050 and you wake up in the morning. If you get the news in 2050, what are the headlines? What does the world look like? What do you think it looks like? And how do you want it to look like? Those two scenarios are often different. Yeah? And if you just look at those, thinking, hey, if this is what I, is this is what I think I'm, it's going, because sometimes in my darkest dreams, I think what Hugo is saying, we're going to a completely digital society. I think, but that's not what I want. But if that's not what I want, if my dream world looks very different, then what am I doing? So the realization that these two are different creates already a different perspective. What are the underlying assumptions that you base your predictions on? Because predictions are based on assumptions and dreams are based on assumptions. You're assuming technology will continue whether we want it or not. That's an assumption. You're assuming uh, technology fosters um, uh, pro or, uh, progress or wealth for everybody around the world. These are all assumptions. So what do you do if you turn, if you imagine your assumptions and you turn them around or you, or you research them, what happens to your perspective on the future? It changes, yeah? You can't help but already looking at things from a different perspective. Now, that's a, a kind of a intellectual risk we're taking, but we are innovating the present by using our insight in the future. And that's quite challenging to do that for students, but I believe we can because we're using collective intelligence together as a group by what do we know now about a certain topic can be I've been using technology but it can be sustainability and then we start predicting and we start imagining and we learn we make sense making as learning and that one is very important because that's what I believe is that we as educators should do students are learning everywhere but they're coming to school and that's a place where we make sense out of it now, so we reveal existing assumptions. Then, and this is why communication is so important, you reframe those assumptions. What is the story behind it? And how can we build a better story? How can we build a different story? And if it changes our perspective, what is the next, what is the next step? And then, if you constantly do that, whenever you examine your assumptions, it changes your uh, perspective on the future. And therefore, it's a constantly iterative process of looking at our future project and our societal challenges. And it raises new questions and those we need to examine. Okay, this project will be a pilot because I'm very curious whether students, um, uh, when I can do this with students. And the reason why this is so important to me is precisely what I, why I asked earlier. We're always running after the facts. We think the future is some kind of entity that's outside ourselves and doesn't belong in the classroom, but it isn't. We are, we are the present and we can shape or influence the future. It's not just something that's coming at us. We are here. We can have an opinion. We can do something about it. And that's where I come back to my basic idea is trust. Trust there is a future and trust in your own ability to do something with it. In order to do this, teachers and students are always these partners on a common journey because I don't know it either. And these are very big challenges and they need rigorous thinking and they need risk taking, they need failure and guts and stuff. So we need each other to ensure we have a safety net. So we need to trust each other's attentions. Whether we're here now in the past or in the future, we're always connected. Thank you very much.